Hey Bremerton, Josh Farley with the Kitsap Sun here on the bridge of the USS Turner Joy. Bremerton's famed museum ship was a Vietnam era destroyer and it has a very infamous anniversary coming up this week. I'm going to tell you all about that and more on this week's edition of the Bremerton Beat Blast. And tease me out a cool kid's top and I could be, I could be, I could be a cool kid too. Well, I don't have a cool car. Welcome back to this edition of the Bremerton Beat Blast, sponsored by the Admiral Theater. Story number one today is the Turner Joy Museum ship. This week marks the anniversary of the Gulf of Tonkin incident, which took place the first week in August of 1964, and the Turner Joy was very much a part of. I spoke with Bill Moore, a historian and volunteer aboard the Turner Joy, about why this incident is important not only in Vietnam's history, but the history of the U.S. military. Two ships, Maddox and Turner Joy, were, were on intelligence gathering patrols, actually. They were in the Gulf on the 4th of August, um, and after, after sunset, um, radar operators on both ships started seeing um, uh, high-speed radar contacts. Uh, both ships uh, um, engaged uh, what they saw as, as those targets. There's been a lot of controversy about what happened uh, on, that, uh, on that particular day. And, and the significance in, in my mind is that it, it changed our participation um, in the Vietnam War from ad advisors, strictly advisory role, to active participants. After the Gulf of Tonkin incident, we landed uh, 50,000 Marines at Comron Bay. Um, we became, you know, uh, participants in the conflict. There are all kinds of events going on on the Turner Joy in the month of August, including green drinks, a special promotion ceremony where Navy sailors will actually live aboard the Turner Joy for a week, and a combination fundraiser involving the Bremerton Symphony, in which members of the symphony will play on the ship's fantail. Story number two, a longtime Seattle developer who lost a lot of property during the last recession has returned to Bremerton. Mark Goldberg has several projects that are in the conceptual phase, so I ask that you take these with a grain of salt. The first is the Old Bay Bowl, where 205 units of apartments could be built in the coming years. The second is just up Lower Wheaton Way, and that one is actually in building permit phase. That's another 100 units. And the third, and perhaps most striking, is the idea of a 17-story high-rise where the Bremerton Eagles now sits downtown. Again, it is very early in the planning process for these projects, but they have in fact reached the City of Bremerton's Community Development Department, which means that they may be concepts, but they are something that it appears Mr. Goldberg is striving for. Story number three, move to Bremerton. What does that line make you think of? Perhaps it's MXPX, the band that recently celebrated its 25th anniversary. Frontman Mike Herrera wrote a song in the mid-90s called Move to Bremerton, and I wanted to ask Herrera what he thinks of the fact that people are indeed actually moving to Bremerton. You guys having fun? You guys having a good time tonight? I definitely didn't think it was going to be a single or it was going to be anything. It was just kind of a funny song that I wrote. Um, because I wanted pe more people to move to Bremerton, you know, let's hang out, let's do this. It's cool. I, I gotta say, it's probably one of the coolest things about um, MXPX and Bremerton, being from Bremerton, is the fact that we have that song and it somehow is a decent enough song that it got popular and, and people know Bremerton because of it. Downtown Bremerton has gotten leaps and bounds better, businesses down there, four streets, amazing. Yeah, I just I, I really I really appreciate all the work that a lot of uh, the city and the businesses have done, business owners. Story number four, and what could be billed as a win for existing property owners in the city, but also a blow to those who want to bring more direly needed affordable housing to the city. The city council this past week put some clamps down on what are known as ADUs or accessory dwelling units, sometimes called mother-in-law apartments. The council was divided four to three on this issue. The contention on this vote was whether or not an owner needs to live at the place where the ADU is located, and it split the council four to three. But now, thanks to the council vote, no ADUs can be built unless the owner agrees to live at the property 365 days a year. And finally, story number five, there's a very important public meeting coming up this Thursday that I want to tell you about. 
changes are afoot for those who are on two feet around Kitsap Lake. You've seen the new crosswalk being installed there, and more recently, the city won a grant to put a big sidewalk between Kitsap Way all the way up to Kitsap Lake Elementary. But public works officials are even contemplating a roundabout in the area. You too have your chance to have a say at the public meeting that will be held at 100 Oyster Bay Avenue in West Bremerton. That is Public Works Headquarters, and the meeting will be from 5 to 6.30 p.m. Hope to see you there. That's going to do it for this edition of the Bremerton Beat Blast. Have a marvelous rest of your week. The temperatures are indeed going to be pushing into the hundreds, so please make sure to wear plenty of sunscreen when you are out and about, and do your best to stay cool out there, Bremerton. Thanks very much, and we'll see you again next week. Music for this week's Bremerton Beat Blast was performed by Ethan Tucker, an Olympia, Washington native. Tucker and his band will perform at Rock the Dock this Saturday at 5 p.m. on the Louis Minter Boardwalk.